Scribbler 2, Project 9, Stop at the Line. Today you're going to learn to program the robot to move forward and stop at a black line. Your workspace will look like this. this the robot is going to move about 12 inches forward on the whiteboard towards a black line. Your learning goal is understand how to use a loop to make the program choose what to do depending on a sensor input. Now, before you can start programming, you need to figure out what your algorithm is. Remember, an algorithm is a set of step-by-step -step instructions so that the robot knows what to do. So first we know the robot needs to move towards the black line. It should ask itself, is the floor black? If it isn't, it's going to move a little farther forward. It's going to ask itself, is the floor black? It's going to ask this question over and over again until it reaches the black line. What technique can we use to make a program repeat a command over and over again? We use a loop. In the loop, the robot asks if the floor is black. If the answer is no, it continues to move forward and check the floor and ask the question. If it's no, you can see we're looping. Now, if the floor is black and the answer to the question is yes, then it moves out this way, it exits the loop and it stops and the program will end, as you can see in this flowchart. So, what is happening? The robot is saying, if the floor is not black, I must go forward. Otherwise, I'll stop. This is called a conditional statement. Conditional statements are very, very important in robotics. This is how to program it. <coughs> Oops. Okay, start with a clear programming sheet and insert a move block. Going forward at 50. Now, after it started moving forward, you've got to put the loop in. We want to have the loop counter at zero because that means it will loop forever. If you see here, it says it said it disables the counter and it'll loop forever. Now you have to start asking the question, is the floor black? We do this by inserting a test a condition block inside the loop. You get the block and you get a test a condition settings window. This is how you instruct the S2 to branch, to choose one thing or another, depending on what is being sensed at the moment. Now let's look at the window to see what your choices are. These are your conditions or sensors to observe. This is an illustration of what you'll see. And this is uh, the number of required observations. Don't worry about that for the moment. We've set it at zero. The conditions or sensors you can observe are check the status of a flag, check the line sensors, check the obstacle sensors, check the light sensors. Don't worry about these. Now, because we're looking for a black line, we're obviously going to choose the line sensors. Notice that as you click through this, you can check to see if the right sensor sees black, if no sensors see black, if the left sensor sees black, or if both sensors see black. Obviously, that's what we're looking for today. We want to say, is the floor black? So we're going to select the icon for both sensors and click OK. So, we've inserted the test. You can see here there's a green check mark and here there's a red X. The green check mark means the answer to this question is yes. And the red X means the answer to this question is no. <coughs> so, if the condition is true, yes, the program will travel through this exit and will do whatever it's told to do over here. 
If the condition is false, in other words, the answer is no, the program will travel through this exit and will do whatever it's told to do here. Now, because we want our robot to stop when both line sensors see black at the same time, we're going to add code for the motors to stop when that occurs. So underneath the yes, we're going to put in a stop block. Now, <clears throat> because once it stops, we want it to exit from the loop, we're going to tell it to do that. Here's your insert a loop exit block. We're going to put it in right here, and look what happens. It exits the loop. So now we see if the answer is yes, it stops and it exits the loop. If the answer is no, it comes all the way around and loops again. Now, finally, as we have done before, you're going to put a five second wait block to give you a chance to get ready. Well, ah, okay, an approximately five second wait block. And then we're done. Good luck.